Hello, welcome to this video. In today's video, what I will be talking about is how statistics and quality management meet. And there's a specific technique that can be done that helps to improve processes. And it's called statistical process control. I probably won't say that very often because it's a little hard to get off your tongue. So going forward, you will probably hear me calling it SPC. So what is SPC? Basically, all processes that we participate in have variation in them. For example, if I were to write my name a hundred times on a piece of paper, the my signature is not going to look exactly the same every time I write it. So you can essentially you know, think about the fact that in writing your name, there is going to be a certain amount of variation in writing my signature. Uh, also, think of a sports event that maybe you like or something. Uh, for example, um, I do like baseball. I don't watch it all that much, but I, I do enjoy it. I used to play it, but the, the pitcher, when they're throwing the ball, hopefully they're throwing it a fastball the same way every single time, but we know that they don't. So when you have that uh, imaginary box that the pitcher is trying to throw in to get a strike, you know, that, that uh, fastball actually might be in the upper right hand corner of that box, still considered a strike. It might be in the middle of the strike zone and that's considered a strike. Uh, you know, so it can actually move around a little bit and still be considered a strike, even though each and every pitch is not exactly the same. The challenge with trying to uh, measure this is the actual measurement itself. So, for example, uh, probably the only way that we can really measure uh, pitchers in a baseball game is the fact that we have video evidence. So we could take video and break it down frame by frame to see exactly what the pitcher is doing. And I'm pretty sure that's probably what they do in order to figure out, is there something happening with their elbow? Is there something happening here? And even like, you know, using my signature example, um, there are things that can cause me to not write my name the same way. So for example, somebody could come and butt me on my elbow and there would be a little squiggly line that goes off that's unusual in nature. Or, you know, the fact that I write it a hundred times, I get, I could get tired, you know, so the first one's going to look a little prettier and maybe the 100th one, you know, it's like, it's just a line because I don't care anymore. So statistics gives us a method, a way of being able to measure this variation in processes in order to make improvements. So again, I, I spoke to this a little bit uh, in like my signature example. You know, if somebody hits me in the elbow as I'm writing my name, then that's a special cause variation. That's something that's unusual. It would not happen frequently. And so we can see that, of course, in the fact that my signature has this really wayward line that goes out somewhere. And, but then the other part of it is that a common cause is the fact that if I'm writing my name a hundred times in succession, the fact that I get tired, anybody would get tired. That's, that would be a common cause variation that anyone having to do it that long would get a little bit tired of it. Now, of course, we want to remove special causes if we possibly can. Um, and I'll give you an example, kind of a, uh, a little out there example. Um, let's say that we are on a manufacturing line and uh, earthquake happens. Well, an earthquake is not something that we can control and it could definitely have an effect on our production. It can have an effect on the quality of our product. Uh, it could have all kinds of special cause variation if we were measuring it, uh, but there would not be any way for us to actually take away that variation because there's nothing that we can do to prevent an earthquake. However, there are lots of causes sometimes, whether they're special or they're common, where we can work to improve them. We can, we can work towards removing them from the process 
And some of that can be, you know, somebody uh, is not trained well on this, on this manufacturing process or something or on this machine. And oftentimes through measuring this variation, we can start to see, oh, you know, okay, we had some new people. Uh, these batches didn't come out so well. You know, perhaps we need to take a, a good look at how we train people so that we can alleviate that special cause variation. Over time, we want to remove as much variation as we possibly can and continuously look to improve this process because frankly, bottom line is you will save a lot of money by doing this. Okay, so in SPC there are two different ways that we can go about these and these are my favorite ones to, to teach and we can look at dimension or we can look at attributes. So what do I mean by this? When we want to do SPC around dimension, uh, that could be anything that's related to weight, height, length, any of those kinds of specifications that oftentimes can come along with product. So for example, I'll give you, uh, this is one of my favorite examples. Uh, I used to bowl. <laughs> I love to bowl. I don't do it so much anymore because I've just kind of run out of time. But, but you know, years ago when I was bowling, I had my own personal bowling ball and that thing was a 10 pound bowling ball. Now I'm pretty sure that at a bowling ball manufacturer that if they are manufacturing 10 pound bowling balls, that there's a certain amount of variation in the weight. It might be 10.1 pounds. It might be 9.9 .9 pounds. I don't know. I don't know where their, their, uh, um, where it's okay to be actually called a 10 pound bowling ball. Uh, but I'm sure it's a fairly tight specification. I, it probably doesn't go too many ounces one way or the other. But if you were to take a bowling ball off the production line at a bowling ball manufacturer and you weighed them, there would be some variation in that weight. Or think about uh, nails. If you go to a hardware store and you're looking for a one inch nail, uh, hopefully that thing is exactly one inches long. But there may be some variation in the length or even the dimension of that nail that is just slightly different from nail to nail. And what manufacturers are looking for is for it to be within a certain specification of one way or the other, maybe slightly bigger, slightly smaller, doesn't really matter. But the important thing is that these manufacturers can actually measure it. And there are people in this world who will go around pulling things off of a production line and they will go measure it, they'll test it, they'll do various things, and they keep track of all that data. And that's the important thing to remember. Now, attributes, on the other hand, this is, do I have a quality problem or not? Okay, so within this arena, business processes can also be measured, not just manufacturing processes. So I'll give a few examples here just to kind of give you some ideas of what we're talking about. For example, when I was a kid, I grew up in a town that had a Westinghouse plant and they of course manufactured light bulbs. And I never went in there, you know, because I was only a kid and I wasn't interested in this stuff at the time. But I would imagine that there was a person who would go and pull some of the light bulbs off of the production line and they would he would take them, he or she would take them to their office and they would screw them into a light socket. And basically the test was did it light up or did it not? Okay, it's either or. It either turns on or it never turns on. <laughs> okay, so they would keep track of yes, this light bulb turned on. It was good quality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would imagine they also had some way of measuring the lumens in the light, you know, and all that sort of thing because a 60 watt light bulb would give off uh, different light than a 40 watt. Things like that. Okay, now. In business processes, we can also measure quality, okay? So let's say that we're in a purchasing department. We're creating purchase orders all the time. And those documents are pretty standard, you know, and we would want to make sure that we have the right vendor on the purchase order, the right product is being ordered, the right price has been entered, that signatures are present. There's all kinds of things 
that we can define as quality around that document. So this can apply to contracts, time cards, any kind of standardized document that has to be done in business. Therefore, we could actually measure it and keep track of, okay, on this purchase order, how many errors did I find? Maybe on this purchase order, I didn't find any. But the next purchase order I pull, maybe I found 10, okay? And I could keep track of those things and just see over time through a visual aid of just how much my process is in control. So what is coming next? What's coming next is I will be doing a presentation using attribute data just to show you how easy this is to do for a business process. And we will take some information and we will throw it into a template that I have. And it's an Excel template and I'm not here to teach anybody the, the actual statistical model itself. What's more important for me is that you understand what SPC is, how you can apply it, and what the lovely little charts can tell you when you're looking at them. So that will be the upcoming presentation. All right, and if you have any questions, please contact me. Otherwise, I will talk to you again on another video. Thanks. Thank you.